Hello everyone and welcome back to Wolf Quest. And uh, I decided to do things just a little bit differently here because uh, last time with Night we actually got through the Amethyst Mountain part of the game very, very quickly. I didn't expect that we were going to do that. So we're actually going to be starting up uh, with our second heir, the heir to Andromeda and Orion today. And uh, we will have the three days out of this week to spend between the two of them, getting re them ready for their first litters. So we're actually going to go ahead and jump in with our other heir. And let's see, she has no difficulty modifiers yet. And our second heir is actually... Aurora! So, you guys voted, and oh my goodness, Aurora took the poll by storm. I've never seen a wolf do that well in the polls. Uh, it was amazing. And uh, so we have Aurora here, and let me actually show you her stats before we go ahead and um, chase down this elk. So she only has 20 strength, but she has 60 stamina and 70 speed, so she's a pretty fast wolf. She's also very light in coloration. Um, she took a lot after her father, but also after her mother in that she has a very, uh, it not, there's not a lot of coloration in her coat. She's much more grayish and her mother was black, whereas her father was brown. So she kind of took a, a mix of both of them. And, uh, she actually has a very interesting challenge and, uh, ability and side quest that I will explain to you guys in a little bit here. So, uh, let's get her fed and get her started on hunting and such. Uh, but her challenge is actually that she has... Why is it still playing hunting music? I don't know why it's still playing hunting music. There's a rabbit over here, too. Uh, but her puppies actually tend to come very, very early in the year, and that causes problems because that means it's still very cold. And because it's so cold, we have to roll each day to see just how cold it is. If the day is very cold, like if it's if there's, it has a, basically it has a three out of six chance of being mild, a two out of six chance of being cold, and a one out of six chance of being freezing. And if the day is freezing, then we have to roll to see if any of the puppies have frozen to death because it's just too cold for them. And, uh, so that's not necessarily, we can, that's part of where her ability comes into play, though, because it doesn't have to stay that way. So she can actually journey to the little butte each day to gather moss. And this is where, again, our story element comes into it a little bit. Uh, real wolves would not do that. <laughs> um, I don't know if wolves actually line their den with anything, uh, to keep it warm, but I don't know, it probably wouldn't be moss if it was... It would probably just be like bits of fur or something. Uh, but for the story element, we yeah, can have her go to Little Butte each episode and gather some moss and bring it back to her den. And if she does that, that will lower the chance of her puppies freezing to only one of six. So there's a pretty good chance her puppies will survive if we can do that. Uh, we have to do that the previous day, though. We can't do it in that episode because the roll occurs at the beginning of the episode. So, like, let's just say that this was going to be the episode where we were going to do it. Then for next episode, her puppies would have protection. Uh, and it also means that we have to do it whether or not the day... The day could be mild for all we know. And we still could go gather moss. So it's a little bit of an interesting dynamic that hasn't really come into play. And then her side quest is that if she manages to line the den with moss every day while she is at the den, then when her puppies, uh, when it comes time for her puppies to actually leave the den, the chance of them getting uh, too cold and freezing to death actually drops down from three of six to um the two of six and if you guys are wondering why am i not reducing those fractions <laughs> because you, you i'm sure there's somebody out there going jay why don't you just say one half why don't you just say one third i word it that way because we're looking at a dice roll and there are six numbers on a dice so i want to uh to explain which numbers you basically you just take the number so three of six any roll from one to three is going to be the um is going to be the uh, the dangerous one, basically. Yeah, so that's why I word my fractions that way, if you, if you guys are wondering why, why that's a little bit weird. Um, but yes, yeah, so that is Aurora's challenge, and um, her, yeah, so I ex actually explained her side quest in there too, so the last part about if she manages to do it every day, then um, 
her puppies will be a little bit stronger by the time that they head out on the journey. Uh, that is actually her side quest. So that's Aurora's abilities. They're pretty different from everything that we've ever had with a wolf before. Uh, we've had we have had several more unique abilities this season, and it's been kind of interesting. So let's see. Where is the herd? I hear them, but I don't see them. They always move off. Uh, if you guys are keeping up with um, with a lightfall story, we can we've seen in that just how far those herds can move. Uh, it it's fairly impressive. <laughs> uh, they can go pretty far, but they came up here. It looks like. So let's continue hunting, and then probably what we'll do, depending on how quickly Aurora gets through her quest here on Amethyst Mountain, we'll either spend an extra day with her tomorrow if she doesn't finish it this time, or we will send both groups off to, um, to Slough Creek, have them choose their dens, and then um, we will uh, have them do their winter hunts the next time, and I'll probably just montage a lot of that. Also, you guys, uh, one thing that I did want to say, too, is you guys have been submitting a lot of names for Knight's pack, but now we're going to need a name for Aurora's pack as well. So you can uh, go ahead and start suggesting those names at any time. Uh, it's always very interesting to hear you guys' suggestions and to see what you guys... Uh, what, what, all the things you come up with. You guys have come up with some pretty cool names, and then of course the puppy names. Uh, we've only had one episode of this season, and I'm already drowning in them, and I still have names from previous <laughs> seasons. Uh, so I, I highly doubt we will ever have a shortage of puppy names in this game, honestly. Uh, you guys are just so eager to uh, be able to help name the puppies, and that's one of the, the f most fun parts of this game for me, honestly, is uh, how you guys get to participate through that. Uh, and you get to do that in a lot of our series. We do that primarily in Wolf Quest, but we've done it in Shelter 2. We'll probably do it in Untamed. It's so cool to, for these games how you guys have been able to give it so much input, and I, I really do enjoy that. Oh yeah, and uh, I don't know if I showed you guys. Have I ever shown... Did I actually show you guys a good look at Aurora here? She's a very light-colored wolf. Wolf. She actually has um, one of the original coats, which are ones we don't use very often. Uh, one of the ones from the very early days of Wolf Quest, because uh, come 2.7, they added about, I think, 15 new coats. Uh, but this is one of the original ones that's been around for forever. Oh, and look at her scratching herself. Aw. But she actually has a little bit of a bent ear there. And I don't know. I don't think I actually really have a story on how that happened. Um... I really don't know. Maybe it happened in playing. How do you guys think she got her bent ear? Was she just born with it? It just didn't quite develop right? Or uh, did she get maybe nipped too hard in playing? Or how do you guys think she got her bent ear? Where did the elk go again? They've already vanished on me. Uh, they're already on the move. They're moving so far here. Did they... They probably went back into the woods. Alright, let's see if we can find their scent trails. Oh, there they are. Okay, never mind. Uh, there they are. Not as far, but yeah, they did go back in the woods. <laughs> Alright, is somebody running? Somebody is running. So let's come around this way. It's nice that there's a little bit of that dust trail, because that really helps out when it comes to finding the elk. If it just gets a little bit out of sight, uh, you can usually find the dust trail and not have to go all the way to scent view. And if you guys haven't been keeping up with the development logs that uh, the team has been putting out, I would really suggest you go look at those. You can find them on the forums, you can find them on uh, most of the places that WolfQuest is on social media. Uh, they're really, really cool, and they have been actually reworking some of the elk system lately. And uh, so they were showing some of the new um, the new fighting moves. Uh, the elk are going to have new uh, new abilities to attack. They were showing uh, one of the elk kicking, uh, like kicking backwards, stopping and kicking the wolf. And uh, that looks pretty cool. They've talked about the new scent mechanic because they're completely reworking the scent system. They've talked about a lot of cool things that are going to be coming for the um, the anniversary edition, which should be coming out. Uh, I don't know when. We, they haven't released when. <laughs> but uh, hopefully at some point in the, the relatively near future. And then a little further out, the Towerfall update, which is going to be episode 3. Which I know is something that the entire fan base has been excited for basically since Slough Creek came out. About, gosh, that would be... That's It's been like, what, 8 years? 9 years? Or 7 or 8 years since we got Slough Creek, hasn't it? 
Uh, it really has. It's been a long time. It, Slaw Creek, in the scope of things, didn't come out that long after the original Amethyst Mountain came out. It was only a few years. And uh, this year is actually the 10th anniversary of Wolf Quest. It's hard to believe this game has been out for that long. It's hard to believe that I've been playing it for that long, but... It's been around for a long time, and hopefully it'll continue to endure through the years. There's there's definitely something very timeless about this game um, that has made it last for so long, and it's been so cool to see it grow and uh, develop over the course of the um, over the course of the game, or and over the course of the as time goes on. It's been so cool to see it grow with basically what games are capable of now. Oh, let's grab this bunny too. A little, or it's technically a hair, I shouldn't call it a bunny. <laughs> um, over the course of uh, the years, Wolf Quest has grown with the capabilities of computers back in the original demo version, which came out in 2007. Um, it was uh, optimized for the computers back then, which were honestly quite weak. Uh, computers have come a long way in these 10 years as well, and now we have this amazing quality here. I think I have the graphics up all the way, don't I? If not, you guys are missing out. Yeah, we have the graphics up um, as far as they go, and it's pretty stinking pretty. Uh, it, it's very, very, uh, it, it's come a long way from the original. I should, you know what I should do sometime is I should go see if I can get the uh, the 2.5 game and show you guys the difference, uh, because 2.5 is the precursor to this. There's another hair running by. Uh, 2.5 was the precursor to this, and it was the old version, um, before... Basically, one of the biggest changes that's come as well is, uh, Wolf Quest moving from a free game to a paid game. And that sounds like a little bit of an aggravating change. It sounds like a not-so-great change, but in reality, it's actually good. Because instead of, um, having to rely on income to continue to produce, uh, instead of having to rely on outside income to continue to produce the game, Wolf Quest is now able to support itself, and so by paying for the game, you're helping to ensure that it continues to grow and be developed, and so it is a good change in the long run, even if it's a, a little bit annoying to have to pay money sometimes, and it's always good to support, why are there so many hairs here, good gracious, uh, but it's always good to help support games like this because you're ensuring their long-term development in most cases. And uh, this just helps Wolf Quest have a much more stable source of funding. Uh, so it honestly is a good change in the long run. And Wolf Quest has always been very good about, from the very beginning since it became a paid game, they've run some contests to get free keys out there so that even if you don't, even if you can't pay for the game, you still have a chance of being able to get it. They've been very good about trying to um, still trying to balance uh, needing and needing income with still getting the game out there for those who want to play it um, which I think is just very very cool <laughs> uh, I've honestly been so blessed to be able to be a part of this journey and uh, to have been a part of it for so long from the very early days and now in the, its later days as a, a beta tester and a moderator on the forums I'm just so honored to be <laughs> to be a part of that and uh, it's honestly an amazing experience, and I will definitely be checking. A lot of you guys have asked if I'm gonna. What is that elk doing back there? <laughs> a lot of you guys have been asking if I'm gonna play, or if I'm gonna be playing the new update. Of course, I'm gonna be playing the new update, you guys. Um, there's no way I wouldn't, but I will try to find out if I'll, I'm allowed to release any beta footage after it comes out, uh, because they have let me do that for previous updates, and that's always a fun little thing to do. <laughs> so if they let me release beta footage, I'll try to get you guys some of that as well. Uh, keep in mind, it's always gonna be after the update comes out because uh, we do uh, run on a no spoiler policy. <laughs> um, there's only certain things that are approved to be shown beforehand during the testing process, but afterwards we're allowed to release more footage most of the time. So I will try to get you guys some beta footage as well if I can uh, once the update has released. Uh, so yeah, hopefully, I, I don't know when it's going to be coming out, but it sounds like it's going to be a really cool update when it does. And uh, I am very, very excited <laughs> uh, for the new updates. Uh, well, technically updates, yes, because there are two of them. There's the anniversary edition. Where did the one go? Oh, there it is. Because uh, there's going to be the anniversary edition, which I believe is coming first. Uh, which is the 10 year anniversary edition, which is when they're doing all these new systems like they're reworking the hunting, they're reworking the scent system, they're reworking a lot of things, they're adding bigger maps, they're putting a lot of cool features into this game and uh, reworking a lot of the mechanics that have been there and uh, just kind of updating all of it. And then there is the Towerfall update, which is episode 3. 
and uh, that's when the uh, wolf pups will actually start to grow up and that's going to be coming a little further out i believe and it will still incorporate the new um the new mechanics add in the anniversary update it's kind of nerve-wracking to hunt with aurora here because she loses so much health in the process because she doesn't have a lot of strength um but she does pretty well so far she's been handling things uh, and that is always good. But we are going to go take out that coyote. And then we should check on how much experience we have. And see if uh, we can manage to um, to find a mate. So we'll probably take a look at that here. And uh, see. There we go. There's another coyote. How much experience does she have? So pack stats. 770. So she has gotten there. So I think we sent Knight up to the pack on the mountain we're kind of avoiding the druid pack, although I guess Aurora wouldn't have to as much, um, because the reason we avoided them so much with Knight is that he actually uh, was part druid ancestry, and so it's likely a lot of the wolves that were dispersals that would be around there would be actually distantly related to him, so we kind of wanted to avoid that. <laughs> um, but Aurora doesn't have that problem because uh, Knight was related on his mother's side and it was his father who's descended from the Galaxy Pack. And uh, Aurora, her mother is from the Galaxy Pack and her father is from a completely different pack. So um, it's a little bit interesting. I can't remember. I think he was actually from that pack, so maybe we'll avoid that pack. We probably will go check out the Druid Pack and see if we can find anyone. See how many times I can say the word pack in, in one, uh, one paragraph there. <laughs> um, but yeah, we'll probably head down to the Druids down here and see if there are any dispersals in that area. Because the other thing is, too, we could just run into wandering dispersals that don't look anything like the wolves and probably aren't at all related to them, but maybe you're looking around that territory to see if they can find a mate, just like we are. So we could definitely bump into someone down there. And is that... No, I think that was probably just ambient. I thought there might be an, uh, uh, an elk that had wandered down here, but I don't think so. Um, let's head this way, though. How far are we? We're not that far. The good thing is Aurora is pretty fast, so when she moves, she moves. <laughs> uh, she can book it when she wants to. Uh, she's a lot like Nova in some ways, because he was a very fast wolf. She's not quite as fast as he was, but, um, she's still pretty fast, and she can get around quite a bit. It's, it's interesting how the stat balance sort of shifted, because... In the Galaxy Pack, Andromeda was the one who was a little bit stronger and had more stamina, wasn't quite as fast. And then Nova was the one who could really just flat out run at a crazy speed. <laughs> and uh, it's kind of shifted around a little bit because Nova's son is the stronger one and Andromeda's daughter is the faster one. It's kind of an interesting shift from what it used to be. Oh, here is someone. Oh, I think this is someone we don't want to mess with. I think she would probably run. Now, keep in mind, I don't I don't feel like Aurora is a very confrontational wolf, honestly. Um, but we do have to continue looking for mate. Keep in mind, though, the Druid Pack has gone through some changes in this last year. They're not as strong as they used to be because their original leaders actually died. And that was something that did happen in real life. Uh, the Druid Pack was a very, very strong pack. They had a very powerful presence in Yellowstone. And uh, they eventually, the older wolves, the experienced wolves, ended up dying off. And the younger wolves were just not as experienced, not as strong, and eventually the pack shattered because of that. And uh, that's sort of what we're seeing here, is that the druid pack, their original leadership died off. And so that would be probably the daughter, that would be the daughter of the leaders. And uh, who is this? We've got a dispersal male. Hmm, he's got a very red coloration. Hmm. I kind of like him. He, he looks... He doesn't... He looks pretty healthy. He doesn't have mange or anything. I don't think he's even from this pack because we don't really see a lot of the red coloration here. We just have the one brown wolf that was uh, Equinox's father. I kind of like him, you guys. Yeah, I think we're going to go ahead... For, for once, we actually have wolves that aren't super picky about finding mates. Uh, a lot of our wolves have been a little bit uh, finicky about who they choose as their mates. But I honestly think, like, we found... I, I, I think he's... A, I like him. I think, he, I think we're going to go ahead and take him as our mate. 
So, um, I feel like Aurora is definitely a little bit more on the shy side, uh, perhaps more like her grandmother Kaya, who was extremely shy. <laughs> uh, I don't think Aurora is quite to that extent, uh, but she's definitely more shy, and he he's kind of hiding out in the grasses here, so uh, he might be a little bit quieter as well, uh, a little bit more on the cautious side. Uh, I just feel like Aurora doesn't rush in as much, whereas Knight may be a little bit more confident and bold. And uh, that honestly does fit more of, um, that, that does fit more of their parents' personalities, too. Andromeda was always more cautious than uh, Nova. Nova would just bolt in <laughs> and uh, oftentimes get himself into a bit of trouble in doing so. So, uh, let's see. We have to hit, let's start a pack again. And, um, honestly, you guys, I think there's really only one name that fits this wolf. <laughs> uh, there's just, there's, I think there's one name that fits this guy. We're gonna call him Borealis, because Aurora Borealis is the name of the Northern Lights, and it just fits too well. <laughs> um, so let's, uh, head these guys off to the Slough Creek Pass. Where is he? Is he keeping up? He's maybe a little slower. Hello there. Hello there. <laughs> it's so cute how you can interact with them, too. I really like that. Uh, but we're going to head off this way and see what we can do. And the interesting thing about Aurora and her challenge, too, is she actually has no direct way of saving a puppy. The only time she's going to be able to save puppies is if she's attacked by the Druid pack. And uh, that could be because of how we were able to... Uh, chase them off the, our territory with the galaxy pack. Um, oop, it never hurts to kill a hare on the way. Get a little snack. I guess Borealis isn't hungry. <laughs> but, um, yeah, that's the only time she's going to be able with that. And uh, I will talk about in the next episode when we get these guys off to Slough Creek to prepare for raising puppies, uh, I will talk about the results of Zona and Navi's side quest because uh, we have voted on that now, too, and I will, I will talk about the results on that, too, because that could potentially have an impact as well. But for now, let's get these guys off to uh, Slough Creek, and maybe we'll get lucky and run into a bear along the way <laughs> and get a little bit of extra experience there, because uh, a lot of the time with finding mates so quickly, we don't always have as much time to uh, gather experience. There we go. That was a very easy bear to chase off. Um, so far, things have been pretty easy for our wolves. All three of our current ones, uh, Knight and Aurora and even for... Whoa, there goes a fox. Uh, and even for Lightfall, things have not been so bad. Uh, but all that has the possibility to change in an instant. Uh, so we do have to keep our guard up. But yeah, Aurora is unique in that she's one of the first wolves we've had in a long time who can't directly save a puppy. She has no ability to rescue puppy... Uh, from any particular danger source, and that's a little bit unique. We haven't seen that in a while, because um, I don't think I don't think we've had any wolf that hasn't been able to save a puppy since Katari and Terrell. They haven't had any special ability to rescue a puppy, uh, and in fact, Aurora's only real way of indirectly sort of rescuing a puppy, because it's not even a guaranteed chance, is due to her own challenge that leaves them in danger. So that's kind of an interesting thing. It's, it's going to be a very different experience with Aurora, I feel. But anyway, we're going to go ahead and leave off the episode here for today. So thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the episode. Don't forget to subscribe, and I will see you guys next time. But until then, this is Jay, over and out.